Welcome to Feelings Toolset 2, using review to manage setbacks. We all experience setbacks. Using personal relationships as an example, setbacks can range from a disastrous first date to a life-changing divorce. Whatever the scale of the setback, our feelings play a significant role in deciding how we cope with them, and how we cope with setbacks can have a profound effect on our confidence. Conducting a review of a bad situation and how we're managing it helps us to work our way to a better outcome and to feel more confident should similar setbacks arise. The toolset consists of this presentation together with a prompt sheet to help you review your situation. In this presentation we will describe what the acronym REVIEW stands for and a process that will help you to take control of your feelings and manage the setback. REVIEW is an acronym that describes the following process. R stands for RATE, where you rate the severity of the setback. E stands for EVALUATE, which involves estimating the severity of the setback as if you were viewing it six months from now. V is for VALUE, and involves assessing the value of your response to the setback. I stands for IMPROVE, and requires you to identify those actions that will improve the progress you're currently making. E is for examining how you might do things differently or better should a similar setback arise. And W is for wisdom. This final step occurs sometime after the setback so that you can understand how it has impacted your life. Rate. This first step of the process requires us to rate the severity of the setback. This is done by assigning the setback a score of between 1 and 10, where 10 represents extreme situations such as the loss of our job, the loss of our home, or the loss of a loved one. The purpose of this step is to provide the setback with a sense of size. The higher the rating, the bigger the setback, so that more of our time, energy and resources will be needed to manage it. For this step, ask yourself the following question. How would I rate the severity of this setback out of 10? Evaluate. Having rated the setback, we then imagine ourselves six months from now. Our future self needs to evaluate whether the current setback is as severe as we perceive it to be today. The purpose of this step is to provide us with a sense of perspective. How often do we find when remembering a previous setback that it was not as severe as when we were first confronted by it. To help you complete this step, ask yourself, how severe will the setback be six months from now? Value. Here, we assess the value of our response to the setback so far. When faced with a setback, we may respond to it in one of three instinctual ways. We may get angry, even when there is no one to direct our anger at. This is our fight response. Another possible response is to either ignore or avoid the setback in the hope that it might go away or disappear. This is our flight response. A third instinctual response is to do nothing, to freeze in the hope that somehow the setback will pass us by. To help you complete this step, ask yourself the following questions. How have I responded to this setback? And then, how valuable has this response been? Improve. This step is all about moving forward in a way that will improve our current situation. If what we have done before hasn't worked, we need to change our response to the setback. The best way to do this is to try something different, something we haven't done before. Whatever we choose to do will provide feedback. Either our action worked, partially worked, or didn't work at all. And based on this kind of feedback, we can improve our approach by adapting or changing our actions until we have either reduced the severity of the setback or overcome it. To help you complete this step, ask yourself the following question. What one thing can I try now that will start to improve my situation? Examine. Once a setback has occurred, it's important to examine how we handled it so that should it occur again, we can manage it. While this step helps us to prepare for handling similar setbacks, 
It also serves to develop our confidence, since we're using our previous experience to inform us about how we might want to behave in the future. To help you complete this task, ask yourself the following questions. What would I do again? What would I do again, but better? And what would I do differently? Wisdom. The final step of this process involves identifying the positive outcomes of the setback. How often have we heard people say such things as, losing my job was the best thing that happened to me. If the house we wanted to buy hadn't have fallen through, we wouldn't be in our beautiful home today. My illness made me realise what is really important to me. Setbacks require dealing with change, which can be difficult. If managed well, however, such situations can create positive outcomes in our lives. Identifying the positive things that arose as a consequence of a previous setback makes us wiser. Such awareness helps us to be more proactive and less reactive during the next setback. Between three and six months after the setback, and up to a year after a severe setback, ask yourself the following question to help you complete this final step. What has happened as a consequence of the setback that has changed one or more aspects of my life for the better? The next time you need to manage your feelings and the setback causing them, use review.